Charleston branch NAACP president Dot Scott tells me she will not let the death of Denzel Cornell go. I speak exclusively with Dot for a special edition of Quentin's Close-Ups. And be sure to download the free Quentin's Close-Ups app in your Apple or Google Play stores. Listen to this interview Tuesday on my free Quentin's Close-Ups iHeartRadio podcast. And of course, subscribe to this YouTube channel. Dot Scott. It's so good to see you again here on Quentin's Close-Ups. Glad to be back. Thanks for asking. Oh, anytime. Well, I haven't seen you in a while. Mm -hmm. What is it like to be here with Doc Scott, the president of the Charleston branch of the NAACP? It's a privilege and honor to have a great opportunity at this time at, in this place. In this place. Mm -hmm. At this time. If you were to send out an annual report about mm -hmm. the Charleston, South Carolina, NAACP branch to the average you know, member and non-member, mm -hmm. what would you tell them? I would tell them we've been on the, oh, we've been out there working. Sometimes it's behind the scene. We've been involved in probably every aspect, every aspect of what goes on in the lives of people who um, have a need for support for civil rights, social rights issues. You talk about those people. I know we talked a couple of months ago about mm -hmm. Denzel Cornell. And you basically said, hey, I'm not letting this go. I am not letting this go. This gives me an opportunity now to be talking with you about it. In recent days, I've spoken with the chief of police. I've spoken with the mayor. And it seems like one of the things I'm not able to get across to them is that the fact that while we can debate the issue about whether or not Denzel killed himself or was he killed or well, a suicide, all of that, fact remains that he was profiled. And but for the profiling, there would not have been an interaction. The other thing, the fact that there was a struggle with the gun, um, and I would say anytime folks claim suicidal with a police officer, that's one thing we really need to look into that there's no report from the coroner's office or wherever when there's uh, uh, a late suicide and it involves a police officer. So the dead man can't talk. So you pretty much never hear it in the news. It's not reported. And suicide in and of itself is not something that's normally reported because that's a personal issue. Usually those things happen within family, within home. Very seldom you see someone uh, in a situation like Denzel and said, oh, you know, because I'm stopped by a police officer, I'm going to kill myself. Now, there may have been extenuating circumstances such as, oh, his mother died earlier. All of that could have been the reason for depression. Well, we go through depression all the time. Young black males seldom commit suicide. And it bothers me that we've got uh, incidents in our city of Charleston, county of Charleston, um, and North Charleston that are reports of death of black males that, to me, I don't believe has thoroughly been investigated. And how do we continue to move forward and say, oh, things are getting better, things are getting better. I said, Mother Emanuel was nine people being killed all at one time. Death by thousands of stab is the same thing. And when we've got that many not explained, uh, investi I mean, death of, of black males, I think that it's time that we not only ask for, but demand a serious investigation of these things. Only in Charleston, and we don't get to do that because I think the image of her uh, destination one, now all of that plays into, okay, uh, we don't need to talk about that. We don't need to stir that up. We can do, we can go back and unearth uh, bodies from years ago and have a big thing about it because nobody who did it is still not alive. Anybody who's involved in some of these recent things, they're usually still on the police force, or they're still here. So we tend to be protective, I think, of, of images of people who could have been involved at that time. Denzel, uh, Asbury Wilder, Drayton, these young men who have been killed in the presence of officers. Well, we have officers, unlike Walter Scott, where the video said, yes, you did. Yes, you did. And in no uncertain terms, this is what happened. Everything else leads to question. And whenever, whenever it's left to question, there's always the, the support on the other side. Um, and we speak about being involved. I have done 
all that have been asked or uh, suggested in support of our law enforcers because I know we have good law enforcers but like life itself we have bad law enforcers as well and when we draw that blue line and say when it comes to these folks we get treated differently and I really do feel like African-American males um, uh, while we know we have a crisis in terms of the drugs and the killing, we've got a major crisis in that. That's something I'm, uh, I can share with you later what I'd like to see happen there, mm -hmm. that we can do as, as a people to make a difference. Uh, but when we see a disproportionate amount of death by interaction with police departments and there's never a guilty or a what I call admitted wrong, there's something wrong with that. Um, uh, we have had, uh, we need to fix this, or we need to train this, and we need to, and nothing irritates Doc Scott more than to have people tell me that the officers need to be trained how to treat black people. Uh, we need the more training. We need the more. No, you need to enforce the training you've already given. Because if they're not, if the officers are not behaving the same way with other citizens, then why is it? We're not a different species. We're just humans like everybody else. But we get in trouble. We 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 make mistakes. We don't want preferential treatment. At least that's not what we're asking for. But we're asking for fair and respectful treatment. And we haven't always gotten that. There are things that have been in, uh, you know, uncovered. It's been in the media. And before we know, we all have forgotten that it's happened. And we can no longer do that. If we're going to move forward, we need to make sure we address some of these issues that, uh, uh, that has not really been addressed. Investigate seriously some of these incidents that have happened. Then we begin to move forward. Because otherwise, we're just covering up, covering up. And we're sending the wrong message. How many investigations are you talking about when you think of these alleged incidents? Well, just, just off the top, I said okay. Walter Scott right. is an anomaly. Without the video, we already know the, the narrative is going elsewhere. Uh, Drake on James Allen. Right, right, right. I mean, an officer actually came on the scene while all the other officers are there. As we've seen in some national stuff, that officer decided we need to go and take him out. Okay, we're talking about Asbury Wilder, and I, I've seen online that his the brothers have asked for a thorough investigation. This guy's on the ground while he's being shot because we fear for our lives because he had, I guess, the knife he had eating that cold cut bologna that he took out or whatever out of out, out of the store. Nobody, nobody should die for that. And when you got officers or a community that knows some of the folks that are dealing with mental illness, why are we treating them that way? But nothing happened there. And then to tell me, Denzel, our we're talking about military guy now, 19 years old, no no indication of any interaction with the law enforcement, any violation, any of this. Oh, he's a little bit, too, he's depressed because his mom died. Well, my mom's been dead almost three years, and I, I promise you, I'm not there yet getting getting that behind me. Because you can, I, I talk about genetics, and then I'm talking about relationship. So depending on what the relationship is. And um, I think that to say that he had some issues and they let him, even with them releasing him from the military, there was never any incidents of violence or anything from this kid. And then to tell me, well, come here, boy. I'll come here without. There's something called life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. Now, when you take a liberty away from an adult person, you just come here. And if you don't, I'm going to rough you up. Well, you have no reason to stop me. Well, the reason I'm given um, over and over again. You know, um, they don't want to call it profiling. But. The fact that he was wearing heavy clothes that was not suitable for that time of the year. That's not good enough. That's not good enough. Because what might be comfortable for you may not be comfortable for something else, someone else. But let's just say he, for whatever reason, living in, uh, visiting in Bayside because of the crime stats there, he felt like, in order to protect myself, I need to carry this gun. Even if it's not my gun, he doesn't own a gun. He somehow got his stepfather's gun. And... He looked like, that's where the profile, he looked like a young black man with too much clothes. And the profile is if he is carrying 
or um, um, uh, he's with those clothes, he's probably carrying a gun. That's no more fair than say, you know, the, the, the stat says white men between the age of 31 and 50 are usually the highest number of your pedophiles. Is that right to go and accuse every white man that way? No, it's not. So why do we do it and think it's all right in the black community? And that's one thing, like I said, I am not going to give up on saying, yes, we want you to work with us, and Lord, I, and I'm not doing them a favor to work with us. I'm working with whomever wants to work together because it, for the betterment of our community. Because I can come back and say out to the community when I'm speaking with them or trying to resolve each and say, let me show you where you went wrong. Let me tell you why, if you had handled it this way, how something could have gone differently. But we are so complacent. We are so complacent as a people in Charleston because this 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 uh, what facade I want to say of uh, everything is well here. It's not well here. And when we're talking about uh, issues of education, and we're not going to have black boys to go to none of the Allen University and some of these colleges that are supported by the church. If you can't get them in your church. You're sure enough not going to be able to get into high school and then into a college. So we had a crisis in our community in and of itself with us. But if we can't get fair treatment of our people, even when they have violated the law, all we ask for fair. We're not asking treat them any differently. So that's why I get all. Don't tell me we got to train. We got to train. If you got to keep, if you have to keep training officers how to treat some people, then. Your training is wasted because we don't have cultural difference. But in terms of the law, the law is not based on culture. The law is straightforward. You do this, this, and that. And if we, can, if you had that many black, white males being killed by a police officer or in, or officers involved killing, we're not going to tolerate that. We're not going to. We've had issues where when when we had one of our school board chair. The son was killed in West Ashley. Shut the place down. And I, I've got to say to us as a people, to us as our ministers, we have to collectively say not only enough, but enough is enough is enough. And that's where I am now. We've got to stop talking about it. We have. We can have a, 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 a forum here, a forum there. And like my girl Elizabeth, not Elizabeth, my girl um, Kamala Harris said, what you going to do about it? That needs to be a new slogan with our people. What you going to do about it? What are you going to do about gentrification? Well, why are we dealing with this housing thing? I don't know. Even what this morning as I read the paper, they're talking about where Charleston is. You have to, when you go to our council meeting and you listen and there are black council people speaking out of both sides of their mouth in terms of why we are where we are. When we read about the money that initially came in uh, for the development on the east side, sure. and that money was loaned to hotel. No. Now, now we want to fix it. It's too late to fix it now because the value of all those properties people lost and all that, and, and the fact that people had to move out, all of that. And now the developers are in, and we, we've got, we're the destination one in the world now, yeah. So we gotta have all these hotels. It's never gonna be the same. In nineteen seventy, early seventy, what we were, seventy five, seventy one percent of the population on the peninsula. And then we had to flight to the suburb suburbs. Now we've got enough folks migrating here that even some of the folks who can afford better houses there over in West Ashley, and the cost of value of houses is skyrocketing. But I always say the value of the house only makes a difference in how much tax you pay and if you're ready to sell it because you can't take the money out of it. <laughs> so, so what do you do with that? But that's why I think that in terms of wealth and, and when we talk about uh, income and the difference in what black women make, black men make, we're, the majority of our young boys, sadly enough, is being raised by single parent, black women. Who makes the less in employment? Black women. So you see where that's going. So gentrification and access to uh, wealth, or not wealth, just decent living, 
when you talk about when when we have money that comes in for development and how um, uh, the government is supporting uh, public housing, most times the investors get the support of the funds coming in to do what they want to do, but a businesswoman like me try to get some of those funds and see how much harder it is, what all you have to do. And uh, while we can make things easy when we need to do it, uh, that's not always the case. So uh, while I can honestly say that I've been privileged to work with a lot of people here that are not African-American, that I think are doing great things, working hard for our support and the support of the community in general. We've got too much of the same thing going on. We've got too much of even our people who have a right that are making decisions as if they're void of the understanding of everybody that looks like me who are identified as African American like I am don't even have a chance. It's like I want you to walk and you don't have a leg and I don't have a crutch to give to you. So we've got a real, I think we've got some serious issue. It concerns me because I said I've got more days behind me than I've got in front of me. But um, I still know there's some work to be done. I know you say there's a lot of work to be done. When it comes to Mother Emanuel, how much more work do we have to do? I don't think you can't do any more. Mother Emanuel has become commercialized now. You understand? We may as well accept that. That's not a front to the family, nothing, because... If my mom, three years later, I'm feeling the way, there are two. But money is being made of this. We can talk about that, but if you don't count up all of the death by uh, elected, let's say the, the all police officers, you're not counting up those numbers. Or you're not talking about the nine men that died in the fire because of what the city didn't do. If we're not talking about Albright Wilson and the nine people that died over there, these are lies. I, you know, I, I, it's so vivid to me the day they had the procession for the firefighters and everybody pulled on the side road and stuff. It's like it rips at your heart because you're saying, these are men that probably didn't have to die. But you don't see that. It's okay now. Somebody did this awful, awful stuff. But it wasn't us, because he's from someplace else. But we still got the statue standing over there, over Mayor Mother Emanuel, who remind you of somebody who thought little or nothing of the, de the, the, the life of black folks. Well, let's be for real. And we have the same people who, you know, like I said, as much as we sit up and talk about the flag and why the flag shouldn't be the end of it, should be the leader. And they, I remember Mayor Riley walking all walking to Columbia. Right. And that's why I'm saying we got to put things in perspective of who do, who did what, who does what, who has helped. But even in that, did we do all that we could do? Did we do all? So right now, we're Mother Emanuel. We're making a play. We're doing this. We're doing that. And the Lord knows. Those life meant, meant enough that you can do all of those things. But that's not the sum total where our problem is. Because if you kill one child, or you kill all five like the guy that's on trial now going through, through the jury, it doesn't matter. The death of these are the same. So when you look at every one of these young men that police officers chose to interact with them, mistreat them, not, not giving them fair, like I said, don't give them anything special. Just be fair with the treatment of the citizen. That's why I have no problem with you, okay? But if I know that we shut the place down when school board son involved in drug, drug as well, because all of that around drug, we literally, we got to get those sticks right away. What else does Dr. Scott have a problem with right now? Education. Education. Uh, and I and I don't have what I said. If I had a magic wand and I knew enough about how to man, let's say, manipulate what needs to be done to get kids educated, it bothers me so much. Right now, we just and this is just something that is as the Denzel Colonel thing lays on my heart. We've got our pastors that I feel through the years and with the powers to be, you know, the folks that you have to speak truth to power, have assisted in, encouraged the separation of 
our religious community and our civil rights organization. Now these are, should be stools. When you talk about labor and the civil rights and the church, those are the three stools that the black community really has to stand on and need to still stand on. But when you don't have ministers involved in civil rights, like I said, I don't know the Jesus he, they serve, but mine wasn't the one I think is my Jesus. He wasn't behind that pole. He was out there in the street. And that conversation needs to be had at the highest level to let people know we can have all of the colleges that these guys who did get go to college and, you know, they uh, romanticizing about this. If you don't get them through high school, you're not going to have any members of the, you know, Allen folks or the Benedict folks and all the churches, schools of higher learning. Where are you going to get your, your children from? So if we don't pay attention to a baby when they can't take care of themselves or not taking care of themselves, you're not going to have any adult children. And we're, we don't want to deal with that. That's the ugly part of it. I know folks, civil rights, that's why I have been in places where everybody getting an award or not, I'm saying. When you get an award, because you do your job and you get paid for it, that's one thing. But when you give up yourself, because to whom much is given, much is required. You're educated enough that you can do some things that may not be clean and dainty and sitting in front of podium with a microphone and espousing all your wisdom and all of this. But you won't stand on the corner to challenge one wrong thing. You're not no Dr. King minister. We got a lot of PhDs and Reverend. Some people have got so many last names you can't even figure them out. But you know what? If you're not a child of God, to me in a black community, you could have all the names behind you because the least among of us is who we need to be paying attention to. And if we can't do it to our children, if we can't do it for our children, who are we doing it for? What is the biggest difference between the 1970s and now when you think of the black community and the church leadership? Well, I think we think we've arrived. Enough of us have been able to be at the table. Uh, enough of us have got enough degrees. Enough of us have got, we're not renters anymore. Um, and I think we didn't see ourselves as a part of those who haven't arrived. Instead of looking back and say, how I got over. I look back and wonder how I got, no, no, no. We've got a division around the black community where we, we, we talk, talk about those who the haves and have nots. We got too many of those in the black community. We don't have enough of the Dr. King and Ralph Abernathy and the, uh, Sidney Poitier. And, uh, I'm talking about people that from all walks of life, even knowing who they were and what their, how much accomplishment they made, they never lost sight of why you were the chosen. That indeed to whom much is given, much is required. Let me get back to the Denzel Pinnell case because obviously you spoke with the mayor and the chief recently. Mm -hmm. Have they been able to sit down with Mr. Uh, uh, German recently? I, the last, in fact, I've watched this man cry so many times because I've been in meetings with him. Right. And, um, and, I, and him and I, we do correspond sure. back and forth because I let him know a long time ago. I'm not going to give it up. They may not do anything, but now we have to move to the next step because out of sight, out of mind. So we need to talk about it. And I'm, I need, we need to begin to ask for investigation. So uh, my conversation last week after I got through talking to both the chief and the mayor, I can see that's not moving the needle at all. Not moving the needle at all. This this is not a money manual care. Who, who cares? And I think the, the, the real problem is neither one of them were in office when this happened. Right. In other words, you can't say, you made that call. No, because you, you weren't the mayor. You made that call. No, you weren't. Chief of Police, and those people who made the call are still here. And you have to be careful that you don't somehow upset the, the balance of the wonderful mayor we had and the Chief of Police that left on his own and say, we need to look at how they handle that. But we do. 
The Honorable Dot Scott, thank you so much for your time. I really, really appreciate this, and I thought my lights were going to hold on, but <laughs> this is a great interview, great discussion. People need to hear about this. Thank you. Yeah, now let's do it again. Okay, we will? Yes, ma'am. We will. Thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh. Yeah.